and I will not stand for that because it was trans people who stood with gay people. I will happily give way to the judge if he asks, rather than chuntering. Now you'll have to wait to find out which one of these wing nuts was chuntering later on, but believe me, it's well worth the wait. But this happened on Friday where Fruit Loops like Seville Cash, Miriam Cates, our mystery chunter and last but not least Leaky Sue decided to make a special effort to turn up and be transphobic in the second reading of the Conversion Practices Prohibition Bill where Tory MP Alicia Cairns was clearly not going to take any nonsense from them. I'm often asked why I fight for a ban on conversion therapy. Surely there must be some personal connection, surely you must have some personal history. But I don't. There is no one in my family, in fact, who is LGBT. We may be the only family in the UK that does not have someone who is LGBT in their family. But the reason I do it is fundamentally because, as a Conservative, I have a duty to defend individual freedoms. I believe that the state should stay out of people's lives, but it should protect the most vulnerable. To defend those who others seek to harm, and recognise that actually that is the first and foremost duty of any government, to protect its people. This is not some woke frontier for politicians to weaponise for clickbait, and I am shamed by the debate that has increasingly taken place on conversion therapy. I remember the first debate I secured in this place on conversion therapy was moderate. We sat and debated the intricacies of legislation that wasn't yet there, but that has unfortunately changed. People in positions of trust are abusing those who they tell are sinful, broken, need correcting, and this causes lifelong hate. There are survivors in this place in Parliament. And the reason I fight so hard is that so many LGBT colleagues don't feel they can come here and be labelled as fighting for themselves. They should be free to be able to do that, but sometimes they can't. And do you know what? Allyship matters. We have a duty in this place not to impose our own personal views on things, but to recognise that our rights, potentially to religious freedoms, can be protected whilst we also protect those who live a life different to ours. I will happily give way. I, I, she's made a, a, the Honourable Lady has made a really important point about LGB people coming to this place and feeling safe to argue their position on this important matter. I have experienced the most horrendous bullying in this place because I take a contrary view or a more guarded view than some in the LGB community. In fact, people in the LGB community are often referred to as bigots and transphobes and other slurs just because we have concerns about legislation such as this and we want to make sure that young LGB people are protected and trans people. Does she agree with me that that must apply, that rule must apply to all sides of any debate and not just one side that she favours? He's absolutely right. But there was one, one digit messaging from his LGB, LGBT. We do not divide the LGBT community in this place. You can say that you have concerns about what we're doing, but by removing the T, you are suggesting that transgender people do not exist. You are suggesting they are lesser than other LGB people. And I will not stand for that because it was trans people who stood with gay people at Stonewall. It was trans people who fought alongside for LGB rights. So when you say LGBT, you suggest when you remove the T, you suggest that they are lesser. And I will happily discuss with you the intricacies of legislation. But when you choose to eradicate them, that is wrong. It is wrong. No, I'm not going to give way on this point because I will not hear more erasure of the transgender community. We can discuss the points of intricacies that I will not stand for. I'm not going to get into the arguments of this particular legislation because the Honourable Gentleman did an exceptional job. The Honourable Gentleman has gone around and met with every single person, view, organisation, lobby group, even if he disagrees with them, and I have supported him in that. He has done a phenomenal job. Yes, meeting with people who, again, removed the T, the LGB Alliance. He has met with them all and discussed it. He has set up what the legislation is, and the legislation protects religious leaders who can still guide their flocks, health practitioners can still support and challenge people, and parents are protected. That is why all major faith groups back this bill, that is why the Royal Colleges back this bill, and why exploratory therapy is protected, because this is a compromise bill. So I say to those in this House who wish to oppose this bill, search within yourself because you have a duty to protect children, you have a duty to allow professionals to do their job, and you need to recognise that for some, their objections are not to the nuances of this legislation.
The only people who fear a ban on conversion therapy are quacks and charlatans who profit from bigotry and misery. Conversion therapy causes lifelong harm. This is a moderate bill, it is a compromise bill, and it does not go as far as the government's bill. And the gentlemen may chunter and laugh, but I'm appalled. I will happily give way to the judge if he asks, rather than chuntering. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mr. Madam Deputy Speaker, I apologise for chuntering. I was, I was simply amused by the suggestion that this is a moderate bill. This is not a moderate speech that she is making. The Honourable Gentleman made, made a very good speech, recognising that there are legitimate views on, on the other side. The way she talks about erasure, the way she just dismissed the suggestions from the Honourable Member here, suggesting that his view is completely invalid, and the way she is speaking, I, I mean, I, I, I have respect for her arguments and her wish to pursue this bill or this kind of legislation, but please can we have a debate with more civility than this? I would suggest that the utmost failure in civility is to erase a member of the LGBT community, to erase an entire group. I'm happy to discuss the nuanced points, but I will not do so if people want to suggest that transgender people do not exist or that we do not already have a definition in law as to what transgender people are. They exist in law, they exist in this place, and they exist in the Honourable Gentleman's constituency as well. The government should back this compromise bill because love is not a pathology. Trans people are not a pathology. You do not treat treating. And I say these very simply to those people. You are seen in this place and you are heard in this place. And very many of us back you and will protect you. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. No, thank you, at least she cared. <laughs> Absolutely priceless, wasn't it? Watching our chunter in Danny Kruger's face after having his backside royally handed to him it was just absolutely beautiful. Mwah! How Neil Anvey and his victimhood was quite extraordinary, wasn't it? How all you within the trans community, you know, when, you're, when you're feeling like you don't have a voice, being treated like a second class citizen, spare a thought for our Neil Hanvey, our poor Neil Hanvey, he's the real victim here. Yes, our Neil Hanvey, so when you're out and about, racked with apprehension on which toilets to use, spare a little thought for our Neil Hanvey. The real victim here. But what do you guys think? Was our Tory MP Alicia Cairns absolutely brilliant? Let me know down below and I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends. Right, I'm off for a shower after agreeing with a Tory. I feel dirty. <laughs>